Hey guys, this is lesson three in our trig unit. So we're going to use trig ratios to find missing sides in right triangles. Go ahead and take the time to get this written down on your cover page for the unit, page zero, unit uh, 17, I believe. And then um, pay close attention to this. Try to understand this to the fullest because in block day or Wednesday, we're going to go outside and, and use this, uh, this math to find the height of buildings and tall objects, kind of um, similar to how I think in Rocket Boys they used the trig function to find the height of the rocket. So anyways, let's get started. So imagine for a moment that uh, maybe you're an observer, so I'll try and draw a person here. You know, my art skill, skills are fabulous. And you're looking um, up at the top of this building here. So we'll, we'll say this is a building. This is the height of the building. You want to know how high it is. You know your distance from the building, which is this one I'm kind of putting the color red. So you're standing 50 feet away. You look up, and there's an angle between um, the ground and uh, the top of the building. As you look, you're using a tool to, to find that angle of 30 degrees. And we're actually going to do this. We're actually going to make, using protractors, straws, strings, and washers, we're actually going to make a tool that can measure this angle for us pretty easily. And then using that, you can calculate the height of the building. So let's, uh, let's use a variable for the height of the building. Let's make, it, let's make it x. So the question is, how, what is x in length? So if this is 50 feet and this angle is 30, how tall will the building be? And we can do some pretty simple math to figure that out because we know that the tangent of 30 degrees in this case is going to have to be equal to x over 50. Because if you remember, tangent is opposite. So find your 30 degrees, find the opposite side x over adjacent. So opposite over adjacent, x over 50. And then using a calculator or uh, a table, or you could just draw a triangle on in your notebook that has a 30, a 90, and a uh, 60. Um, or using your 30, 60, 90 uh, special uh, triangle. There's lots of different ways you could go about this. But in this case, one thing you could do is just type into your calculator um, tangent of 30 degrees. And it tells us that it's point, and I'm going to round this, of course. It tells us that it's 0.577, approximately, equals x over 50. Now it's some pretty simple math to solve for x. And we just multiply both sides by 50, and we know what x is. So times 50. And so that comes out to be about 28.9 is, is the value of x. So 28.9 feet tall. So there's obviously going to be air when we do this um, outside, and we're going to talk about those air factors. But, of course, you know, there was uh, – this is a 60 – 30, 90 triangle or 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we could have just used our special triangle relationships to come up with this value as well. And I challenge you to use the special relationships between the sides of a 30, 60, 90 and see if you can come up with something about 28.9. Let's do one more. So for just a moment, let's do some math for the sake of math and we'll worry about application in a moment. So suppose, suppose that you're given a triangle and you're told this angle is 55 degrees. You've obviously got a 90, so it's a right triangle. And that this side right here is 30. So that means that this angle up here is supposed to be or should be exactly 35 to make them all add up to 180. Because 35 and 55 and 90 make 180. And you're asked to fill in all the missing information. So the angle part was easy. But we still have to find these missing sides here. And for the sake of example, let's call this x. Let's call this y. We're trying to find x. We're trying to find y. And there's a few different ways we could do it. Now, let me show you a few different ways just because uh, I want you to know that you're, there's not just one ratio that you can use. You can use sometimes multiple ratios. So the sine of 55, so find 55, is opposite side over hypotenuse. So sine of 55, in this case, is going to equal 30 over x. And the cosine of 35... So find 35, is adjacent over hypotenuse. So cosine of 35 should equal 30 over x. And if everything works mathematically, you know, like it should, we should get the same value for x. So we could have either done the sine of 55 or the cosine of 35 to solve for that missing side x. And let's go about it now. So the sine of 55 we know is, well, we don't know, actually. I'm going to plug it in and find out. The sine of 55 is approximately 0 0.82, and that's going to equal this 30 over x. 
So we do some algebra, we solve for x, and we're going to end up with 30 divided by 0.82 to solve for our final answer. And that comes out to, so x equals right at about 36.6, roughly, approximately. And if you're wondering, um, if I skipped a step there and that bugged you, what I would do uh, um, algebraically is I'd multiply both sides by x, and then I would divide out by the uh, 0.82. And let me separate this with a little line. So I can show you that in a little more detail here with the cosine of 35. So let's see if we can get the same value. So the cosine of 35 is approximately 0.82. And you're probably going to notice right now that the math is exactly the same. We're going to get the exact same answer for x. So just in case the algebra there before messed with you. This is what I did. I multiply both sides by x. Okay. These x's canceled. So then I had 0.82x equaling 30 and divide up both sides by 0.82. So x comes out to 36.6. So now up here, I know that this x right here is 36.6. And I did it two different ways. So this means that the sine of 55 must be the same thing, must be a congruent to the cosine, cosine of 35. So that's an interesting thing that we just discovered, I think. It's very interesting. All right, so what about this y value? Well, from here, we could use the Pythagorean theorem. We could use, because now we know the hypotenuse, we could use the, uh, the, uh, cosine of 55, we could use the sine of 35, we could use all different kinds of ratios to solve for y, but I'm going to leave that part up to you. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and be ready to come to school and apply some of this stuff.